So what is it that brought me to Caesar? I am really impressed by Caesar's uh, academic approach, the rigor, but applying this in a systemic way. So it's looking at things not just from an interdisciplinary approach, not just from the different risks and looking at, at that, but also just the way in which this is this, these are risks that are deeply problematic, deeply global, and it's always been the case for me, I just haven't been able to understand why people are not obsessed by these things, because it's like, yeah, we can keep our head down and walk along the street and go shopping or whatever, but actually, you know, what's the meaning behind all of that? And for me, Caesar brings all of that into one area where we can, like, look at really fascinating dynamics. And for me, coming to Caesar, I come from a nuclear weapons background, but I'm really interested in the transdisciplinary, trans threat issues, the way in which we as human beings cope with managing such dangerous things as nuclear weapons, how we cope with the fact that our lifestyles creating such stresses on the ecosystems that they're collapsing. You know, how do we climb out of these huge threats? It's not that I'm a doom monger, it's that I'm really interested. <laughs> Yeah, so for most of my life I've not been an academic. Um, I've been more of an activist uh, and focused on policy. Uh, I kicked off really my career working on nuclear weapons policy uh, for a very small think tank called the Oxford Research Group. We were looking at the way nuclear weapon decisions are made. Um, but while I was there, I was also engaged in peace movement activities. I was breaking into air bases. I was uh, organizing massive demonstrations. Uh, I was uh, uh, doing some pretty radical things at the fringes of the peace movement, uh, which I, I'm still proud of, um, and uh, which at the time were about trying to make the most of uh, getting out of the Cold War and really getting rid of nuclear weapons. Failed, of course, um, but still worked both as a researcher and as an activist. I then also got involved in the Green Party and I ran uh, Oxford Green Party for some time with some, some friends of mine and we got elected and I was representing the university and then I became the, um, the leader of Oxford City Council. So then I moved to London uh, and uh, was involved in the election campaign there. I was running it uh, for London Green Party and almost got elected as a member of the European Parliament and uh, was um, quite involved in teaching systems thinking uh, to senior civil servants at the National School of Government. So that there I was working alongside Professor Jake Chapman, my mentor, who um, is an extraordinary systems thinker, but it, it, it brought me into awareness of holism and looking at com complexity, and that has fascinated me ever since. And then I was, I guess, uh, involved in a number of nuclear weapons projects, uh, looking at trying to influence both international issues and local um, UK issues. I set up the Trident Commission, uh, which I then ran and uh, serviced, and that included Martin Rees, who, uh, who set up Caesar, and Lord Des Brown, um, who is also involved with Caesar. So, so it was then that I, I was aware of Caesar's creation. Uh, and, uh, and then in my final few years uh, in nuclear weapons work, I set up this uh, uh, approach called the Stepping Stones Approach, which came to form the backbone of an international campaign by 16 countries, including uh, Germany, Sw Sweden and Japan, and a number of other really quite significant countries who basically saw this Stepping Stones approach that I created as a new way of trying to breed life into the multilateral disarmament process. So that's what I've been involved with. Bit of green politics, bit of nuclear disarmament, nothing to do with artificial intelligence, very little to do with uh, a number of other issues that Caesar deals with, but seeing all of these come together is what I'm interested in. When I was 12, uh, my brother came home from university and he talked about nuclear weapons. Uh, he'd just been involved as an activist. Uh, 
And I heard this and I thought at age 12 how outrageous it was that a small group of men could basically threaten the future of uh, the planet. And it was anger rather than fear that drove me. And ever since then, I've basically existed in this alternative universe to the most other people, where it just feels as if there are big decisions that are being taken that create risks for us, for all of us, and yet most of us have very little awareness of it. And then as a decision maker, I came to realise that even decision makers have very little awareness of it. So it's, so it's like we're sleepwalking into annihilation. And, uh, and, and that has always stayed with me throughout my career. I've been involved in ecological campaigning, uh, green, green politics. I've been involved in the peace movement. All those involvements have given me a very strong sense of the need to draw people into processes that they wouldn't naturally be involved in. And I've come to realise that when I'm trying to influence people, be they members of the public or senior decision makers or leaders of countries, I have to start where they're at first and then walk the walk with them and, and open myself to the possibility that I, that I may be wrong. So it, in this process, it's been quite a fascinating learning experience for me, not just intellectually, but also emotionally. It's got something to do with who I am, and that who I am is more than just the righteous activist. It's actually the person who is starting to recognise that things change when we open to not knowing, and where we uh, engage with a sense of humility and strategic empathy. I've always uh, looked at this as nuclear war and climate change. And uh, it's always been put to me as if those are com competing uh, interests that, 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 that we have to either focus on nuclear war and uh, that those people are getting all the, all the airtime. And then the climate change people are going, well, nuclear weapons get all the attention of government. So there's, there's, a, lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of jealousy in this field from one set of people looking at another, pe uh, another people's issue, other people's issues as if they are uh, like uh, in a much better position. My perspective is that none of these achieve the, uh, uh, the uh, interest and, uh, and attract the understanding that they deserve and so I'm really interested in looking at the cross-cutting themes. How do we, those of us who care about these issues, how do we accumulate more understanding, and not just about how the science works, but how people's psychology works. How do we draw people together a very different perspective, and getting them to understand that those people's perspective, they may disagree with them, but they're really important and really valid. Um, I, I've been working quite closely with uh, the uh, a former a captain of a nuclear weapons submarine who became a assistant chief of the defence staff in this country, responsible for the whole nuclear, en nuclear enterprise. He and I have very different perspectives, very different tra trajectories. We both understand that the other can, can be a source of useful information and understanding and knowledge when it comes to m moving in the right direction. And as a result, we've collaborated quite a lot since he's retired. It's just an example of how I think we all need to open up to perspectives that are not our own. And that's probably the most important thing I bring to Caesar. Not a strong knowledge of nuclear weapons, not a, a big, solid PhD and academic experience. It's actually about trying to uh, encourage people to look beyond their own perspective and see the broader picture.